Very classy. Oh, look at this little face. No, I don't want to look at little faces. Nar. I don't want to. Nar. Wanna. I know. I know you love them. They're your children's. They're your your kittens. They're my cattens. The cattens. But like they're, they're but, grown, but they're still kittens. Uh, but they're, they're just. I can't. Like but I do. Look they're how death cute to me. his face is. They're death. They're yeah, but if they death weren't incarnate. death to you, you would still lo- you would yes, like them. Yes, of course. I've always said that, but they're death incarnate to me. So they look at me and they go. <laughs> but only because you're allergic. They'll kill me. Like literally, you haven't seen the stuff I've gone through when when I'm around cats and like have to live with them. Okay, but have you seen the Sixth Sense? Yeah. Maybe you're already dead. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> hey, everybody! This is the bright side with Mikey and Rachel. I am Mikey. Rachel, and I'm back, baby. I'm back in action. You thought you were going to get rid of me, but you couldn't, and I'm back. To be fair, I didn't try to get rid of you. Just German Wi-Fi tried to get rid of you. (laughs) That was so sad. I know. We were all ready to go, and I was like... We were literally about to press record, and it was... It It started going shit. Yeah. That that picture that I posted of you was you frozen on my screen for like five minutes straight. Uh, okay, uh, but wasn't uh, that Renoir painting uncanny? It you know, looked just you like know what's you. funny. You know what's really funny is that you think so highly of me, and I love this that you would you think I would know who the fuck you were talking about. And the whole time I was like, yeah, uh huh, oh, totally. sure. And the whole time I'm like, I have uh, no fucking clue. Renoir, you're talking about. famous painter. Yeah, tell me more about it. Uh, I don't he, care. I, don't I mean, care. he I don't paints care. I don't people. Care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Oh, no, I can hear you. You you said it out loud. Did I say it out loud? Yeah. Good. Oh, good. (laughs) Also, by the way, I'm back in the country. You're back in action. Back in the United States of America. I get to see you and and hear your voice so perfectly. Here we are in the flesh looking eye to eye at one another. And who else is here but Brett Dahlenberg? Bredifer. Bredifer. I call you Bredifer. Like Jennifer. Hi. (laughs) I'm here. Also... (laughs) Also, he's here and he's made he's made drinks. He's made himself could you tell a us, pink drink. Could you tell us what what is what is the drink you are drinking? Uh, Describe it to us. So this is a variation on a classic drink. Well, I don't know if it's classic, but it's old. It's called a French seventy five. Oh yeah, but yeah. But this is a bitter French because it has a quarter ounce of Campari added to it, which mm. makes it pink. Yeah. And also makes it slightly more bitter. But I think it like makes the drink personally. Yeah. You want to sip? No, I'm okay. It, it looks ha- it awesome. It has gin, simple syrup, <laughs> lemon juice. That looked like it hurt. Uh, <laughs> Campari and uh, champagne. That's beautiful. This really, it, I love that that shade. I mean, that shade of pink is like is like the back of of uh, my iPhone. It's like almost the same. It it's like candy pink. It's perfect. Um, what are you drinking? Brett's, Brett's a mixologist now. A microsologist? He's a mixologist now. I'm drinking a Moscow Mule with homemade ginger syrup. I thought you were going to say homemade uh, with, copper cup. Uh, homemade copper cup. Copper cup <laughs> homemade ice cube. We, we, we put all the indentations ourselves. Homemade water. <laughs> homemade, homemade water. Homemade vodka. Homemade water. Where did because the water come from? Because you know, from? back in Soviet Union, oh, you do not no. buy vodka at the store. You just make a bathtub. You're stupid. <laughs> See, you only have to deal with it once a week. Yeah, I know. You, it's every day, day for every you. minute. Yeah, you just, you just. That's why you started drinking, <laughs> baby. <laughs> well, you don't need a reason to start drinking drinks no. this fine, but no, you don't. I mean, maybe they are really, really beautiful. It's just the the only reason the only reason I can't today is because I went out last night, and I was just telling you guys before you hopped on here, and I went out last night and. For four hours, I had two drinks, like two like shots of whiskey, but not like shots. I mean, I drank it slowly, but I was I felt so drunk. I felt like was almost, it the elevation <laughs> or lack? We're actually a lot lower. Was it the lack of elevation? I think so. Yeah. Thank you for for clearing that up. I think it was although the lack I think of the there. lack of elevation allows you to drink more. I don't know. I'm not a skyontologist. <laughs> what? <laughs> What? You were about to like the look on your face was like <laughs> I was about to agree with you, and then you were like, like wait, "Wait, I heard it again." That doesn't sound right. Uh, but That's no, I had stupid. I had like two whiskeys over like four hours, and 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 I felt so hammered and so drunk. Oh, I was I like, I was like, this is so I weird. I don't even care. I don't care even. Why. Oh, it's so much. It's so much better. <laughs> Our jokes are so much better when we're in person. I know. I'm punch you. Oh, bear! It's so good to see you. It really was fun look to not see eyeballs. you for so long. Looking at me in person. 
Catton. Catton. Coming close to Threatening you. Threatening me. Meow. Go away with your starry anus. Um, um, you just got a job. Yar. <laughs> you just got a job because they called you up a minute ago. I'm going to be on a TV show. Yeah. This is news for Brett. Manana. The same one. Yeah, but I haven't done it yet. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay, because I, I thought oh, they yeah. called Brett you up. Oh, yeah, Brett knows about it. Okay. No, 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 no. They had to confirm. Right, right. I'm going to be on a TV show tomorrow. It's called Hack My Life, and it's about life hacks. Yeah. It's on, I know. It's on. <laughs> classic name. Classic. I mean, obviously. It's on True TV, which I've never seen. T-R-U. No T-R-U, T-R-U, T-R-U no dot R-U, no TV. You. She was like, she, Brett, she was really funny. She was like, it's, like, it's, it's some internet show. I was like, wait, wait what, what channel is it on? It's like, it's a, a show called True TV. I was like, no, that's a channel. That's a legitimate channel yeah, on, a, on the TV. TV. Yeah. Oh, see, now I did not know this. Maybe I should do my research. No, no, because you might hurt no, the computer. No, no, don't do your research. Okay, so tomorrow... The Australian accent's getting a little bit better. I've been <laughs> studying. Yeah. I um, am riding a bike tomorrow. Yeah. I don't know what i'm doing you said hipster thing right they want me to look like a hipster they said come as hipster as possible i mean that's perfect because like we had you do the same thing when me and kevin did that hipster night at lindy focus a couple years back remember oh yeah but i was not nearly as hipster as oh, i am you're now. gonna be a real i feel hipster. like i'm more hipster now i've got like plaid shirts now you're a noho of course I've you got are. <laughs> big big grasses studio city. yeah we're in studio city please don't associate us with them <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, Jesus. You guys are like half a mile away from what's considered no-ho, and you're like, no. It's no, no, no. It's disgusting. The people <laughs> over there are awful. Wait, but don't you guys go there a lot for eating? Don't you for eat a lot eating? There? For eating on restaurants? Oh, my God. Studio City has everything you could possibly want or need, and it's better than those other places. They don't have me. Well, if you lived here. Okay. Also, you're not in <laughs> no-ho. No, I'm you no, live I'm in no ho not. Nar, <laughs> nar, you live in Orange County. Orange County. I, you were like trying to think of the name of the city. You're like, Orange nope, can't County. remember it. I know it. It's Laguna Hills. Oh, God. Good, what good do you stretch. think I am? Stupid or something? I just spat you just on you. Spat I am on me. so oh my sorry. God. That just no, flew that across was, the room. Oh, my God. I just remembered why, we, why I moved. I got to leave. I got to go. <laughs> I'm so, I can't do this. You know what? It's not my fault that I have overactive salivary glands. As you said it, you're like salivary glands. <laughs> salivary glands. <laughs> so uh, let's let's talk about um, your trip back home. That was a day of uh, of like the pl- the plane rides were easy. Like there was like hardly any turbulence, but it was like I had a six hour layover in Toronto, mm-hmm. which is nice. Canadians are cool, but, but also like, like Canada. No, nah, Canada's awesome. No, nah. like the people were cool, but the thing is, I like, actually like. <laughs> Did you eat a donut? No, no. Did you as go to soon Tim as Hortons? as soon as I went to no, I I saw it and I was like, nah, I don't want it. Uh, I I as soon as I like walked over, like I stayed away from like where my gate was. Like I just like hung out in a restaurant and then hung out um, in this. Wait, before I talk about this, like they have they start to have these things. I saw it in in Newark, mm-hmm. where like it's called like C A C I A B O. It's a company name. CIA, Chabo? yeah, something like that, and they and they've taken over basically a bunch of uh, of like fast food restaurants or just all the restaurants and all the shops. Big in brother most, in most of in most of uh, airports. Mm-hmm. I saw it only in Newark before, but then I went to Toronto and I saw it there, and I was like, "Huh, this is weird." So one of their like key things is like you have waiters, but you don't actually interact with them. You interact with an iPad in front of you, and you order everything you want on there, and you can stay there as long as you want, and they have, all of them have, like, games on them, and you can see where your gate is. You could, like, stay there. Oh. And they have, like, plugs and, like, USB plugs and everything. And so, like, you could just stay there for hours and, like, not have to talk to anybody until you order something, and then they just bring it out to you. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's not bad. And and on top of that, like there, they have huge signs like you don't have to eat here. You could just stay in in the booth and like hang out if you have, yeah while you're Aww. at the airport. So I stood there for a long time, right? It was great. So it was like really far away from my gate. As soon as I walked over my gate, I looked over and I just saw like blonde, blonde, tattooed man, probably an actor, probably a musician. Like all yep. these people, I was like, I was like boobs, blonde, big blob, boom, <laughs> now, now, and I was like, I'm going to L.A. <laughs> Which is funny because you know people. In other places that aren't in LA, don't have boobs. So no, they don't. Not like, like LA boobs. There's a hello. there's something very very fancy and overpriced about LA boobs. Yes, right here. Yours are Uno coming in very dos. nicely, right, Brett? What? Slowly but surely, <laughs> they're growing in. 
<laughs> just give them a couple more just years. Give them a co- I mean, that's what we've just been saying. Just give them a few years. We've been saying that they'll, for a long time. They'll, they'll, they'll perk up. <laughs> I was going to say they'll poke on through, but that. <laughs> <laughs> that too. That too. Uh, but okay. yeah, there was, I mean, but besides, right. besides that, besides that, it was, it, it was a nice trip. And LA, LAX also, like, I'm fucking talk. This is, this is how you know I've been in too many airports. Like, I, I start, like, raiding the airports, and I'm like, LAX is starting to come up in the world. Like, they're They've actually, been like, doing a lot of renovations. A lot of renovations, and on the inside, too. Yeah. Like, there's lots of cool places. Like, I flew, I think I flew with Delta the other day, like, maybe a year ago or so. Did you see the nightclub? No, they had, what? <laughs> what? What <laughs> do you mean? I'm just joking. What nightclub? There's no nightclub. Okay. No, I, but they I had, just made it up. But, but they had lemonade there. But you would think that they... Oh, did they really? Yeah, and I, don't I was like lemonade that I much. Do, oh man, when you go when you go to like the fucking airport and like all you see is like a Starbucks yeah. and like a shitty Sabaro. Oh, well, okay, sure. And then and you see lemonade and you're like, holy shit! Like this is lemonade. actual good food. Yeah, uh, the thing that I don't like about lemonade though is that everything is cold. It's like cold pasta salad, cold oh, potato salad, really? cold regular salad. I don't, I don't know what lemonade you're going to, but I all, every time I've been there, I've only had hot food. Like the really? Thing. Yeah, like not that they like heat up again. It's like hot food that's there. Oh yeah. There's one like literally Down less than a mile from yeah. us. Yeah. I like them. I don't know. Maybe it's a different place. Like I know, like I've been to two of them and they were completely different. We went to the one that's close to Bevy Hills. Or three, guess it. Yeah, three. Um, but yeah, like I mean, this is really funny because I was like walking through. I was like, oh, this place is really good. I'm this like place looking is around. Up and coming. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's really bright. So it's like really bright, and they got they rid made of it so much brighter. Yeah, and and there's something about that that's like, I don't know. It just makes humanizing. It, it makes, yeah. It's, I don't know about it. It's, it's, lights are good. Light be good. Light be good. Light be good. Um, Yes. But besides that, it's been nice. I mean, I hit the ground running. I got here on Tuesday night and then all day Tuesday, like back to back things. I just like got busy. Yeah. Had like a half hour nap and then like went out for the night and I got back home by like one and like woke up and I've been trying to, I've been going to the gym. So my legs really hurt. Like yeah. it was really funny on Tuesday. Tuesday I go to the gym. I'm like, I'm gonna take it easy, and then I start running. I was like, Hey, this is fine. So I like pumped it up. I was like, Yeah, like my old, my old, my old, my old uh, uh, like numbers, like uh, that I was as speeds yeah. and everything. And then and then like I was like, Great. And all day yesterday, I went really early in the morning. I went 7 a.m. So I was like, All well, day. That I was is like, early fine. for you. Yeah. Fuck yeah, it is. And and then all, all day I was like, Yeah, it's great. Yeah, working fine. Working fine. Then I woke up today. And I, was, I woke up out of bed. And I was like, Ooh, <laughs> ow. And then I went and ran and I tried to do the same thing. And I, and I did like just barely made it through. And I was like, oh. uh, uh. Don't as, you even hate, as I'm doing this, like my legs. like. Don't you hate how me. some days you're like, oh, I'm, I'm a golden god. Yeah. I can run the fastest. Yeah. And then the next day you're like, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. I'm yeah. old and forlorn. Yeah. It's really good. Like I told myself, okay, so I'm trying to do a week this week. I'm just going to do running. Mm-hmm. But then next week, starting next week, I'm going to do 40 minutes of running, which I usually do like 50 minutes of running. But okay. I'm going to do 40 minutes of running. And then I'm going to do like 15 to 20 minutes of, uh, of deadlifts, mm-hmm. which is a really, really good exercise for like all your body. But you don't know really what to do. Like, it, as dancers, like, I feel like you're really good. So, with deadlift is basically, like, the barbell is on the ground. You right, put right, a number right. of weights on it. And you just grab and it you from you the just, ground. But, like, yep. as you as you go down, like, you have to have really good posture in your back. Mm-hmm. And you're, like, squatting all the way through. And you go right. all the way down. And you bring it up really slowly. But you bring it up through your, like, feet. And then you, like, you bring up your back. And then you pop your hips through. And then as you go down, you, like, b- make your hips go back. And you keep your back straight. So, it's, like, working every single muscle and adding weight right. into it. And, and, like, it's methodical. So, like, you do a... 20 or 15 to 20 minute set and every two minutes you have to do at least 10 okay up and down is one right and so my cousin was telling me how to do it and he and he's like oh yeah just think about like in good dancing posture like and you try to do it like that and then you take it to like super extreme by going all the way down and super extreme by going all the way up and i was like oh that makes it really easy yeah uh, it was it was really cool so i've been i've been wanting to do this for a while because i want to have upper body strength because like i feel like my, my legs pretty bulky <laughs> <laughs> they're like they're like a good thoroughbred. Yeah. My this legs are a good thoroughbred. This, is, this one's going to win the, the triple one, crown right here. This one's going to win the triple Woo! crown. Just lefty, though. <laughs> Just le- <laughs> the right good one's old a, lefty. The right one's a little bit plump. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, and, and, and so I'm excited for that because like, uh, I've learned that my gym at 7 a.m. is pretty empty, which I was surprised. Like I yeah. thought it was going to be really packed, but it's really empty. I was like, shit, this is awesome. So I, don't, I won't look like a weirdo yeah like 
<laughs> lifting like, up the weight and like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry everybody, left is a thoroughbred. <laughs> but sorry, my left one is good, my right one just makes noises. Everybody, there's a there's I'm like this my legs, really by the way, my balls, <laughs> cute tiny uh, gym right around the corner from us. Yeah. Like, kind of want to go explore, but I'm like not a gym person. Yeah, I don't like going. To I gyms. wasn't. I wasn't either until I actually started going. Like I yeah. used to, I used to work out only at home. Like I used to do like yeah, the workout programs. Yeah, that's what I do. I work was, at home. And th- but then I then I got comfortable enough. And I was like, I think I could do this in gym, and, I, and I, it just takes time. You know what it is though? It's I don't I don't like the thought of people sweating on machines, <laughs> and then me using the machine after they sweated is, all over. Which is so it. funny because like you touch sweaty leaders all the time i know but at least i know like the basic context <laughs> of them like i know what like they've touched the i know person, what they've danced with the person who Stupid. touched my my machine before i got there could have been there five minutes ago or ten minutes ago and i never even saw them so i have no mm-hmm. idea mm-hmm. what they look like or mm-hmm. how clean they are cleanly cleanliness you know what i mean yeah no totally i do also when i was in high school i had a teacher who went to the gym and got a staph infection from the gym and almost died Okay, well, I mean that's that's the great thing about LA Fitness. Like, I see the I see the people cleaning all the time there. There's always somebody cleaning there. Also, that was Albuquerque, which is like Me- Mexico, capital of the world. But it's like Mexico, but slightly cleaner. It's newer and slightly, it's slightly newer. newer. Slightly, slightly newer. newer. It's slightly like Mexico, cleaner. slightly newer. It says it in our name. <laughs> it says it new. As soon as you cross Mexico. the border, it says it in our name new. Hello. Uh, shall we go into the topic? Sure. I mean, all who right. cares about how I am? Like, whatever. All right, let's move on. Hey, to Rachel. Topic. Hey. I don't care about who you are. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. So. Oh wait, wait, no, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I want, I want, I want you, you, I want to hear. Did you listen to the Joe interview? The Joe. Oh, podcast I listened song? to it. Yeah. Oh, I. It was listened. ten. It was ten hours long. It was so long. It was so fucking long, and I did not mean it to be. So what the thing <gasps> is, I even cut twenty minutes out of it. Did you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there was a lot of like random stops that we had to take. That I was like, yeah. I'm looking at the camera or like. Um, it was long. And the Wi-Fi. And then sometimes like I was like, oh, wait, I can't hear your voice. It was like weird. Anyways, but I swear to God, I looked down at the recorder and it said 44 minutes. Like I vividly remember 44 minutes. And I was like, cool. And I look up and I swear it was just a couple minutes. I looked down and it said 154. And I was like, what the fuck? I mean, I heard the surprise yeah. in your voice. No, I, I legitimately, like, I swear to God, we were just talking for like a couple minutes. It was really fun because we had lots of we drank a bottle of wine between me and her and and a lot of gummies. A high heel gummy. High heel gummies. I don't high remember them. Gummy. I felt like they were like unicorns, but whatever. But I think it was it was just it was really fun to go by go by Memory Road with her because like Yeah. Damn, like we have a long history like back in the day like in Irvine. Back in the day. Back in the day. Like for I had broken up with a girlfriend and like I had like hanging out with her and like like just being like a normal person. I always like I, I meant to tell her in the podcast. I was like, I always credit her for helping me how to interact with people. Yeah. Because she's like she does the Joe interview. And if you're she listening does. out there, if you haven't had the Joe interview, just go up and talk to her. She'll do it right away. She will. <laughs> she just goes she into will. questions immediately. And they're actually I mean, like they're questions because she's listened to you and then she forms a Didn't question. Didn't she get based a degree it. in psychology? I just I know her. I don't actually know her though. Stop it! Stop embarrassing Mikey. Yeah, yeah, I'm Rachel. Sorry. I'm sorry. Stop embarrassing me, boys. <laughs> I like having bread around. <laughs> <laughs> boys. Uh, be, be nice to Mikey. Yeah. He, he works hard. I, w- I think. I know how to use computers. Probably. Probably I don't know how to use computers. <laughs> oh, I have to tell you my story. I didn't tell you my story. What story? Okay, Tuesday. I'm driving to an acting class, and I'm driving down Fairfax. Okay. And all of a sudden, this woman behind me starts, like, honking at me and tailgating me, like, really close to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what is her problem? She just, like, wants to speed around me? Like, she can just switch lanes and sure. speed around me if she yeah. wants to do that. But she's not. So I, like, pull into a gas station. I need to get gas anyway. And she's, like, still honking at me. So I pull over to the side. I'm like, good God. Like, how obnoxious is this <laughs> woman going to be? Good God. So I'm sitting there waiting for her to just get around me. And she rams right into one of the metal posts next to one of the pumps. Jesus Christ. Like the head? Like like the head of her car? Like yeah. The... Well, and like the whole front corner of her car was totally gone. Like the front bumper and like the whole uh, right front corner. And she didn't just like 
kind of like bang into it. Like she scratched like the entire side of her car, like major scratches. And I look at her and like roll my eyes and shake my head like, you've got to be kidding me. She gets out of her car and comes over to me. So I roll down my window and she's like, you swiped across all the lanes on Fairfax and then you grazed my car and I was going in to go get it fixed today and then you made me hit this metal post. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about because I didn't touch your car. I didn't swipe across any lanes. I was in one lane the entire time. Jesus. And it's not my fault that you hit this stupid post. Like, you turned your stupid wheel and ran right into it. And that woman... Is Taylor Swift. That's it was Taylor nice. Swift. That's good. It was Taylor it Swift. It was Taylor Swift. It was Tay Tay Swift. And I was like, Tay Tay, I am so sorry. I apologize. Let me sing you a serenade. No, no. She, you're going to be in her next record. We're going to be. So, to the lady who swiped my car. To the lady who swiped my car. <laughs> it's going to be the new <laughs> single. We're going to call it. We're and call everyone it. who knows we're all who's heard me, which is everyone on this podcast, heard me <laughs> sing. One of six. They know that I'm an amazing singer. One of six. I love to brag about it. One of six. Uh, she was a total scam artist. That is crazy. And I was like, I'm not, yeah. like, it's not my fault. And she's like, I can't, I just can't believe this. And then she like, spit, like, I literally looked down for a second and I looked up again. She was gone. She'd spit off. And this dude. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> and then she was gone. And then <laughs> this guy rolled up and he was like, hey, are you okay? I saw that woman following you and chasing you. That and I was like, insane. She, she was crazy. She was cuckoo. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why you don't go down Fairfax by yourself anymore. I know. Well, what is this world I, we're coming so then, to? So then I went to my, <laughs> so then I went to my acting class, and I was like, you guys have to tell you the story. I was. It's driving, a monologue. Hold I, on, everybody. Everyone, was, sit down. I was driving down Fairfax, and then they were like, "Well, that's your first problem. Yeah. You don't <laughs> drive down Fairfax." <laughs> Which I was like, okay. Point taken. Like Fairfax is. <laughs> I mean, but I have to drive down Fairfax to get to my class. I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, there's other ways. There are no, no, no other ways, ways. Ways, like ways the app. There are no there's other roads. Ways. You're stupid. Bre- Brett has something to say. Uh, it's the fastest way coming from... Oh, now you're now you're on her side. I mean, it connects to Laurel Canyon. I don't take sides. I just call it like I see it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I call like I see it and I put periods where <laughs> Okay. Oh, Jesus. Okay, that's, that is a fucking crazy lives. story. I'm so glad you're alive. How, f- right? Like, I'm, I'm happy she didn't hit me. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Also, like, how could I have grazed her car when she was behind me? I mean, right? Like, it's called science. Jewish magic? Let me explain <laughs> science to you, Mikey. Science. Scientology. Science. You have to you have to pronounce the C. It's sky Scientology. Skyans. Skyans. Yeah. Yes. Well, back in Soviet Union, we do not have science. We just have small rocks and mud. And potato. And potato. We, do, we eat the potato. And we eat, make the vodka out of the make potato. The <laughs> okay. It is total uh, shit, but I like it. You know what? You know what? I you sorry. You, I just reminded me of something because it, it came up on the show. Is that. I started out my mornings in, when boom, I was in Madrid boom. in a, watching the the Late Show with Stephen Colbert because they. <laughs> I think his cat just died. Cat just fell off of the yeah. table. She just rolled off of the table. Yeah, she's over here. She's over here. <laughs> she's landed over here. Go go no no don't make up for she's it go away little, go away. She's a little embarrassed now. Yeah. Um. So yeah. I start I started like watching, uh, the Late Show because the 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 Stephen Colbert show takes all of all of the whole episode basically cuts up cuts out all the all the uh commercials mm-hmm. and puts up basically the whole show what the the late show with stephen colbert yeah they cut out all the commercials and they basically upload it all to youtube oh to youtube yeah. i didn't understand so, what you were saying obviously it's technology i get it <laughs> it's called science <laughs> maybe you've never heard of it you keep saying science. it wrong, you keep saying it wrong. Uh, so no I, I kept watching it and then they had the russia week and really? i couldn't stop thinking i was like Rachel. Oh my just God! Rachel. Just Rachel. Just the Rachel. Rachel. Like I couldn't watch it. That's how. That's how much it was. Like. <laughs> that's so my funny. Guy, uh, but no, it was. It was really funny. Yeah, he went out there for a whole week, and like they were. They were filming a bunch of episodes, and then he came back, and then two weeks later they showed it, and that was last week. I think. Yes. I it's a really, really fuck. It was really, really great, and and yeah, they were talking about all the vodka and all the potato and all the stuff. Potatoes. Oh, that was good. 
So let's do this. Let's do the damn topic now. Now that we let's faked do you the out topic. before, go ahead and read it. So the topic today comes from Isaac Garfinkel. Hey, buddy, how you doing out there? I know. Yeah, that is the real name. Brett reacted the same name. And I were like, yeah, well, that was the real <laughs> That's name. That's the real name. I had to look it up. Also, I looked it up twice just to make sure. I was like, mm. your name is so awesome. It is awesome. It's but it's, you really, don't, no, it's you don't just, see it. You don't see it very often. That's how no, awesome it is. But it's, it's, really like, it's like, one of those things, like, that can't be our real name. It's a good it name. Was, yeah. It's a good name. So he sent us uh, like a gajillion questions. And no. so we turned it into a topic. So I'm going to read all the questions. It's a paragraph. What? Okay. okay why why no, are you whining good. over there? I'm just happy You're to just be just being a little baby. Okay, moving on. <laughs> read the damn question. <laughs> he says... What differentiates the good dancers from the great dancers? It's easy to find the distinction between new dancers and experienced dancers. A mastery of fundamentals, a focus on technique, a development of individual voice. But what separates that group from the next group? This question is brought to you in part by your conversation with Nicole and Carl, where Nicole lamented having to compete against Remy and Elise. There's no doubt in anyone's mind that Nicole's a top-notch dancer, but I find it hard to describe in words what sets a pairing like Remy and Elise apart. It's really good. I like that he gave the, gave the example at the very end. Brett has a question or yes, comment. Yes, Brett. He raised his hand. Quality of movement. Period. I can, so like, that, when that you, pretty much wraps yeah, up our really good. show uh, for today. So that, um, I'll see you guys what's later. What's your uh, bright side, Mikey? <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna, we're going to confuse so many people with this episode now. <laughs> See, this is why your podcasts are so long. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not here to rein you guys in. Damn that. Every time. Every time. It's because we're both dreamers and you're an anchor. That's real. That. That's real. Okay. So in my class, my acting class. Hold on, guys. This is not part of the topic. It's not. It's not. It could be a part of the topic. Who knows? Go ahead. Go ahead. So it's a sitcom acting class and there's 10, uh, there's like 10 major archetypes of characters yeah. in sitcoms. And in my class, my teacher had us all like define or like identify which one we are in real yeah. life. And I said I was a dreamer. And I was like, I can, I can even like, I have the book. I can show sure. you the book. Uh, but so like an example of a dreamer is uh, Lucy Ricardo from I Love oh, yeah. Lucy. She's like lovable and charismatic and super charming. And she like always wants something but yeah. can never get what she really right, wants right, right. like she always wants to be the star on ricky's show yeah. but every time she's actually on the show she fails miserably right, right. i'm like a classic dreamer classic classic I mean, I mean, miserably so failed. So classic. <laughs> I mean, the failure is outstanding. I thought we decided that you were a narcissist. Well, okay. So, that, <laughs> so this is what happened. This I love is, it when you go. Wow. Okay. This is what happened. Go ahead. And, <laughs> and I'm just. We're gonna take like a quick deep dive into. I guess so. Me because. Oh. Because you're the narcissist. <laughs> Okay, so this is this is what happened. We're gonna get the hate pillow. We, out a so bit. we had to like explain <laughs> to the class everything and would, like give examples. Mm -hmm. And my example was that I like to charm people who can't be charmed. So okay. like I I do it a lot at my coffee shop job. Like people will come in and they'll be like really cold or hard to talk to, and I'll be like, I'm gonna win them over. I'm gonna make them best friends with me. And then you went out there and tried it? Yeah. I mean, I've done it several times. Oh my God, my so current weird. my um, current project is Jesse Tyler Ferguson from Modern Family. Oh, yeah, yeah. He comes into my cafe a lot. Yeah. And when I first met him, he was, like, pretty cold to me. And I think it was because the way I was speaking to him, he was like, ooh, this girl knows I'm on TV and I'm not <laughs> going to put up with this. But I've just been like very persistent, and his husband came in, and I talked to his husband the same way, and so I think now he's just like, oh, that's just how this girl is, which is true, like that's just how I am. And so, and so I was like talking about how I make these goals for myself, and someone in the class was like, oh, but wouldn't that make her a neurotic because she makes these crazy goals for herself? Neurotic. <laughs> and then I said. But I do it because I want to be the cutest person in the room all the time. And then my teacher was like, well, it kind of sounds like you might be a narcissist. <laughs> and so then 
when I had to go up to do my uh, my scene, we, we like right. always perform in the class. Right. I go up and she's like, "Shh, everybody, Rachel's going up now. Let's all give our attention to her." Could, excuse, could you just hold it just down hold out there? It. Rachel's going up. Rachel, Rachel is going to speak. Taking the stage, and I was like, "Thank you," but <laughs> but I, then I spent the rest of the day feeling uh, feeling so much regret of. Revealing this deep, dark secret that I like to be the cutest person yeah. in the room all the time. Yeah. And now I've just revealed it again because it's I not, can't keep my mouth shut. It's not a secret. It's not a secret. <laughs> I didn't tell you my story. I didn't tell you my, my story. story. <laughs> no one asked about me. Uh, okay. So anyways, uh, <laughs> wait, what am I? A dreamer. I, you think I'm a dreamer? I think you're a dreamer. What I, do you think? I, I, I you could fail, be a dreamer. I fail horribly. Or you could be a buffoon. I think I'm more the buffoon. You could be the buffoon. I think I'm more the buffoon. You're probably the buffoon. Yeah, you could be a hybrid. I think Brett's the anchor. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's an anchor. He's an anchor. Uh, we need to move along to the topic. <laughs> Thank you, Brett. Anyway. Actually, yes, that's very true. So to, uh, why back, don't you, back to Isaac. Why don't you read it one more time because we ha we haven't talked about it in twenty thirty minutes now. <laughs> what differentiates the good dancers from the great dancers? It's easy to find the distinction between new dancers and experienced dancers: a mastery of fundamentals, a focus on technique, a development of individual voice. But what separates that group from the next group? This question is brought to you in part by your conversation with Nicole and Carl, where Nicole lamented having to compete against Remy and Elise. There's no doubt in anyone's mind that Nicole is a top-notch dancer, but I find it hard to describe in words what sets a pairing like Remy and Elise apart. What do you think, Michael? How dare you? Uh, <laughs> I think, I think, I mean, there's so much to talk about this and that none of them make sense and they all kind of make sense. Well, we've got three so, hours, so let's yeah, dive seriously. in. <laughs> like, what differentiates the good dancers and the, and the great dancers? Like, it could be like everything and it could be nothing. And it could be like timing and it could be talent. And it could be, uh, Brett's taking a selfie of us right now. I'm just going to cut that out. Why not? But I mean, <laughs> it could it could be so many different things. I, I mean, and it could be nothing. It could be timing, which it has to do nothing. It has to be luck. If like you're in the right person, right time, you know, like and you start you start learning at the right time or you start you take that one lesson and you start going into it and then yeah. you just further into it or or like you win that one contest and that gives you enough confidence, which we'll get into a little bit later, which is a really good thing that you brought up when we were discussing this before we got on here. Um, but I think for me, like the way I see it is what differentiates a good dancer to a great dancer is, is the ability to not only not have, not only like understand the dance for, for whatever level they are, like for whatever it means to them, yeah. but also pursue it in, in, in a manner that makes them happy. Now, does that mean be a teacher or be an international instructor or some bullshit like that? No, it could be like making Lindy focus. Like it could be like making a great dance school. It could be yeah. it could be uh, uh, doing one one contest a year like they that they don't is only in your hometown and like that's like it could be that like it could be just like they know what it means to them and they they keep doing the dance in that fashion and it could change, but it usually it usually kind of follows the same kind of idea. So what I mean by that is is in the um. If you want to just dance and social dance, you never want to do a goddamn contest. You never want to do teaching. That's fine. There's this one guy I'm thinking of in particular. Like I don't know if you know him, but his name's Slippery Tom. He's from New York, and he and he learned from George Lloyd. I don't know any of these names. Exactly. He learned from this old old badass uh, uh, Harlem dancer, and um, and he was like, you look at him and you're like. This is like some weird New York trash guy right here. Like, I don't even think he has a home. Like, it's weird. Like, he always wears like this certain baseball cap, just like sort of black and like these like shitty shoes. But then you see him walk in and he sits down and he puts out, he gets out his dance shoes, which are like really nice white shoes. And all he did was like fucking like butter on the dance floor, like smooth, He's like smooth, butter. smooth style. And like that, he is a great dancer. And if you talk to like, any only uh, any old school like East Coast mid timer, not old timer but mid timer. Mid timer. Yeah, like the, you say Slippery Tom and like oh Slippery Tom, like there's like legends of him. He used to only like come out to like bigger events that were like on the East Coast at the time, so it was like yeah. LHC, okay, or like Grand Nationals, 
And and the funny thing was, was like people started like they knew about him and they would dance with him and stuff. And then like they got to know him and like that guy who you think is like a trash person is like, well, he lived in like downtown Manhattan in the financial district in like yeah. the fucking 58th floor of something. And like, yeah, he was like all about it, like well to do man. But like he chose to like dress down and like dance the way he wanted to dance. And like that's the difference. Like he never did a contest. Yeah, he never yeah, he yeah. never really taught. Like I think he tried it. They tried to make him teach the first two years at ILHC because they were like, "Oh, you need to go out there." And then, really? Yeah, yeah. He was a judge the first year for sure. Oh, really? Yeah, he hated it. He fuck it. He like they they like begged and pleaded with him. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Like that from that. Does from he me, still go out dancing? I think in New York every once in a while. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure, but like not as much anymore. Or oh, maybe he moved out of New York. I think when like when like the stock market stock market took like a really big hit. Like, mm-hmm. I think he moved out of there. Um, but anyways, but, like, he's an, a great example of that. Yeah. Like, he did it for what he felt like it was for him. Like, he did this, and he's a, to, a considered to me, and, and I feel like a bunch of people that I would know, like, a great dancer. Yeah. You know? And so, like, the difference is, like, good, there's a ton of good dancers out there right now, I feel like, in the dance community all over the world. There's, yeah, you can be, you can be really good, for sure. That, and that's not, a, that's, not a, that's not downplaying it. But to be a great dancer, like, you, you have to... You have to, I mean, like he says it, like finding your voice, but like we talked about this earlier too. Like it's kind of, that's even itself an umbrella term. Like there's so many things that go into that. And I feel like one of them is, is understanding what it means to you and then, and then following through with that. And then understanding, of course, that in the future, like it could, it could change and it's yeah. totally fine. So, well, it kind of sounds like what you're saying to me though, is that it's not, it doesn't necessarily have a lot to do with skill or technique or anything else but just your love for the dance yeah because i feel like at some point it'll make sense to you so like if you go to a big dance event and you go take a class from every dance teacher there you're gonna see like ten thousand ways to talk about the same guy same thing yeah same swing um the end result is always going to be the same which is we're all looking for how to how to connect with somebody and how to have a good dance yeah but the way to get there is so big. It's like it's like those old school like uh, I mean for me old school like when I used to go to when I used to go to school uh, and they had the whiteboard and they had the middle like the the the, the main topic and there's like have a good dance and then circle that and then like lots of lines coming off of it like a bubble and then like like technique is one of them and like passion is another one you know like it's all that kind of What's shit. What's that chart called? A cl- idea cloud. I think it's like an idea cloud like type thing like that. I think so. It was like something like that. It's like when you're brainstorming, basically. Creative cloud? Yeah. Something like that. I don't remember. I knew it had a name. Do you remember? Yeah. What? Mind, something. Mind cloud? Mind Something meld. like that. I mean, I mean, but like you, you, do, you go off that. So I feel like it's like that. When every time I think about like, uh, 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 like different, I mean, I'm kind of going off topic, but I'll come back to it. It's like teaching styles and the way that people understand the dance. I feel it's like that. It's like, because we're all going, we're all trying to have, just have a good dance. Mm -hmm. But that may mean different things to different people. And there's different ways to get to that good dance. Yeah. And so that's why for me, like the idea of being a great dancer is it can be so many, so many different ways of getting there. It's not just the one way. Shh. Okay. I I, I hear what you're saying. So like my whole example with with Tom and everything, that's just one way. So, so are you saying that his pure love of the dance made him a great dancer because he was able to just absorb information. That's the biggest, that's the biggest thing, but that's not the only thing. Okay. The one of the, I, I'm just trying to the, clarify. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 of course, of course, of course. I think, cause that was a complicated story. Yeah. I think with, with Tom in general, like he loved the dance, learned it from one of the old timers used to do it, kept dancing, never did contests, never did teaching gigs, never did judging things. They only bugged him that one time for ILHC the first year, or maybe the first two years. And that was it. But, like, he was considered by many dancers at the time to be, like, that guy. He knows what he's doing. Like, he, he fucking, like, feels this dance. When you dance with him, you can feel his dance. Feels the feel spirit it. move. Yeah, 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 for sure. So I, I, I feel like that's the most uncommon road taken nowadays. That's why there's, like, so many oh, yeah, good dancers. For sure. Because all, all the people that I would consider, like, a good dancer are, like, doing it the more, the more homogenized version, which is, like, go out there, make a YouTube clip of you dancing, go out there, go and dance contest and a YouTube mm-hmm. clip, or, or, like, go out mm-hmm. there and try to get a taster class, which hopefully make, gets you a, a gig, and then yeah. you teach, like, the full eight hours, and you're, like, a headliner, like, type stuff. And that's a way to get there, for sure. Like, I'm not going to doubt it, like, for sure. That's a hustling way to do it. I feel like that's, like, the major way to do it right now. Yeah, yeah. That's, like, 95% of the way to do it right now. 
Mm, that's one way. That's one way of doing it. Okay, but who has done it another way recently mm -hmm. that is teaching eight hours at a workshop? Uh, but that, that, that's the thing is, is like that you're you're saying that everybody that's teaching eight hours at the workshop is a great dancer. I, well, <laughs> no, I'm not. But but you were using that example. Right, right. As as in one of the ways. As in, I'm just saying, there's just another way of doing it. Oh, oh. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I got yeah, you. I I'm got not, you. I I'm got not you. saying any one of these ways are good or bad. I'm just saying that's just a way that we've seen. Got you. you okay. Know? No, I'm on it. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you, Chief. Brett has a thing. Well, I mean, so what I hear you saying is. Or rather, the way I would say what you're saying is that there are great dance people. There's yeah. great people that are dancers in our scene. And I 100%, 10% agree with you. And I think there's, uh, a th I mean, not a thousand, but there's multiple ways where you can become a great person in our dance community yeah. that's a dancer. Yeah. I don't know if that's what Mr. Garfunkel was asking. Garfinkel? Yeah. Is it Garfinkel? Garfinkel. Oh, I'm sorry, Garfinkel. But now that's uh, the, that's the funny thing is like he 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 has a long question, but like the the two thirds of it has to do with the with the, or like half of it rather half of it has to do with the contest that Nickel and Carl and and Rachel were in mm -hmm. against Remy and Elise. But the first half of it is just asking what the differentiates between a good dancer and a great dancer. And you're right, like it is because I have it later in my notes that it's just like it's it, it's it's understanding that it's not a difference, it's the person itself and the person can be a dancer as well. And so like, yeah, like I think, I think the bigger, easiest way, like how you explained like earlier, like just like one, one sentence, like I think to the, what differentiates a good dancer from a great dancer is a great dancer is just a person that happens to be really good at that too. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Cause I wouldn't, uh, I mean, that is a totally valid interpretation of the question. Yeah. I'm not going to discount that. And I think you explained it very well, but my interpretation of the question was more like, how, as a judge, would you determine, like, if you were judging a contest between a good dancer and a great dancer? Because that's what he said. It was inspired in part by the contest right. at ILHC, which is, that's exactly what the judges are doing. They're not really deciding who's good and who's great. They're just putting people in order. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I, you, you can see his point, right? Like, you put uh, Carl and Nicole, who are good dancers, and then you have Remy and... Elise and some would say are great dancers by comparison. Now, if you put Carl and Nicole against, you know, random Joe Schmo, Carl and Nicole are great dancers by comparison. But then, so what is he trying to get to? Like, what's where, where, what point are you objectively a great dancer? And that's why, and I know I was yeah. kind of flipping earlier when I said quality of movement, but yeah. that was actually my real answer yeah, yeah. is that if you're looking at, for, at technical, you know, who's technically a great dancer, or I'll even go creatively, technical or creatively mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. artistically, who's a great dancer. Mm -hmm. Quality of movement is probably at the top of my list personally sure, of sure. what would determine that. Uh, but, you know, you bring up a really great point because there are, you can be a great technical, creative, artistic dancer and be an asshole of a person. Oh, yeah, totally. And our, and we've scene, seen it many times has, our scene has borne this out. Yeah. Uh, we don't, we all know the controversies. Mm -hmm. We don't have to go into them, but the, mo like all the big high profile uh, controversies in the Linny Hop scene have involved somebody who I would consider a great artistic, technical, creative dancer, mm -hmm. and turned out to be yeah. at best a super complicated person, and yeah. at worst a total asshole deserves to be in prison. Yeah, and, and, uh, and so we need to highlight the thing about the it. Yeah, th that's that's what I'm saying. Is like because like you guys have seen me go through a couple different things in the last like four four or five years now, and. I feel like the biggest transformation, the biggest clue came from the idea of like having a conversation with somebody where I was like telling them like my philosophy of how I approach working in this dance scene. And I was like, well, they get, they get Mikey and they get, they get this guy who's like outgoing and, and energetic and like, and like drink and dance and teach and do all the things. I mean, like, he like great out there, but I wear that as a mask and, and like, I'm really just like this other guy and like, that guy is like the entertainer and I'm like, I'm just like the, 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 the antisocial dude on the side. And, and what I came to find in this conversation, the guy was like, I don't get it. Why are you doing that? That sounds like a lot of trouble. And that sounds like a lot of like spent time, spent emotion. Like why are you separating it so much? Why don't you just be like a whole person? And you have times where you can be energetic and times, but it's still you. And then you have times where you could be like a little bit shy and going to your reserved mode, but it's still you, you know, like always bring it back to that. And I was like, 
you're totally right. Like, and ever since that, like, not ever since like that one point, it took me some time to really figure that out. But ever since that, I've really started figuring out, like I became a, a, a better centered person. I feel like a better person. And I feel like, uh, uh, through that, I know I'm going to make mistakes, and I know that if I identify that I made a mistake, then I can help to fix it. So, like that in itself, like the process of, of that, I can take that process into dancing. And now that I'm working working at it, like pretty much all the time in my life, whether it be dancing or outside of dancing, like that can help me become even better than what I am, whether it be a dancing or a dancer or a person. So, like that's what I'm saying. It's like a lot of these people, like not only they do they just apply these things, like okay, today I'm gonna train for two hours, I'm gonna do this whole thing, and then later I'm gonna go murder people. You know, yeah. like you yeah. know, like it's it's not that so like you know very very one sided or the other. It's like it's very close. It's very like they they take their their knowledge from life into dancing. They take their da dance knowledge into life. Like it's it's very yin and yang. Yeah, I mean, I I absolutely agree. The difficult part is for someone like Mr. Garfinkel. What's his first name? Isaac. Isaac. <laughs> I love Sorry, you call I forgot him. his. I forgot. Yeah. I forgot his first name. Mr. Garfinkel. <laughs> Mr. Isaac Garfinkel. Uh, for someone like Isaac, who I don't know him. Yeah. Uh, but let's assume that he doesn't know Carl and Nicole personally. He doesn't sure. know Remy and uh, Elise personally, or maybe just barely. Yeah. Uh, all a lot of those things that you talked about, you wouldn't know just by watching somebody. Yeah. Dance. Maybe you get some of it from their teaching, but maybe not. Maybe they're a different person when they teach than they are the rest of the time. But that's uh, the thing. That's the thing is, is like the people that I consider great dancers, they don't separate that like how I used to. They don't separate that. The, the person you see them is a part of them. Sure. And that is like it's not all of them, obviously. It's like just like like a really great, great actor. Like you, you see them because they can draw off of like real, real emotions and bring that into their act acting. Right. And like mm -hmm. you, you, we celebrate them. Right. I mean, I think, I feel like that's, that's the same thing here. Like we were talking about it earlier, like someone like Frida or someone like Sky or someone like Naomi, like those people like themselves, like they are them all the time for the most part. Like they, they're, they're yeah. very, and, and the only part that we don't as the rest of us get to see is how opinionated they are. Yeah. You know, like they're 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 they have opinions and that's totally fine. And and I may disagree with them. You may agree with them. You may disagree with whatever, whatever. All sorts of all across the board. But the thing is, is like they have formed an idea about something in this dance that sometimes someone hasn't even thought of yet. Like a, a, a good dancer hasn't even thought of. And that's the that's the difference is that they haven't even made an answer about it, but they are thinking about it and they're processing the whole idea. Well, and I was <sighs> That, that whole point that you're bringing up is what I was like, <clears throat> that's a whole skill set and a whole attribute that an artist will mm -hmm. have that not everybody is going to have. Like right. they're taking ideas that they have received from the past a historical dance, Lindy Hop. They have internalized it. They've understood it well. They've understood who they are very well for the most part sure for the most yeah, part yeah. and then they are uh seeing what they can do they're with it. yeah then they're outputting their own interpretation of it yeah, yeah and not everybody can do that no it's it's very true and then and then there's like i was saying i was saying the, the there's still a variable to that whole idea because like so like that's one thought idea of way of going at like knowing yeah. understanding your past understanding where you are now to take it to the future but then there's then there's another part of it where it's like someone like remy or someone like pamela that they have a basic understanding of how where this dance came from yeah and they and they're okay with that and they're fine with that like they're they're they're, they're okay with learning new things about the past of this dance but they understand that part and then they but they understand themselves a little more and what they like and what they dislike in dancing in general, and then, yeah. and then what they like and dislike in Lindy Hop in general, and then they're able to create something out of that. They create their own their own uh, version of this dance, and that's why that's for me when I watch them. That's what makes them great dancers because I'm like they're taking the little information that they have and putting it into the grander information of what they already feel and what they know about themselves, and then they're creating something. So that's where it's a little yeah. bit different. Of the well, and things, I think yeah. I think you could still be a great dancer in that regard. Like if you if you can compensate on one side for the other side, like maybe Remy doesn't have the most uh, 
knowledge about Lindy Hop history, mm -hmm. but he has a very good knowledge about himself yeah. and what he wants and what he likes and what he loves out of the dance, then he's able to output something that's truly himself and I truly can, creative. I totally, I totally agree with you. Like when you were talking about like how like he thinks about himself, like uh, I know I can hear him already going, well, well, I don't know about that, but I know I'm honest. I know. <laughs> I know. As soon as I said that, I was like, oh man, if he were listening to this right now, he'd be like, no, I don't know about that. I just... If he was listening <laughs> to us right now, he would have turned off five minutes into it he'd have been like nope can't do that but like you, you know like it's it's something about it's something about the the idea of like of it you don't have to have the answers and there is no answer to lindy hop like i feel like a lot of people like asking questions like what is lindy hop what what are you trying to say with it what are you trying to it's like i don't know i'm just gonna do it though and then figure it out as i go like, you know, like it's, it's, I don't think people are like trying to, trying to say something with their dancing all the time. Like maybe with a routine, sometimes like I'm trying to say like, I like slow dancing, you know, like something like that. Yeah. It could be something basic like that. Or like, I'm trying to say the, the repressed people of, of Romania need a new, like, I don't know, whatever fucking thing. I was trying to make up something funny, but nothing came out. So, <laughs> but so the, funny. Yeah. But you know, like it could just be, I don't know how I feel about this, but this is this is how the song makes me feel, and I really want to express that in front of people. Like it could be super basic like that. I think, I think a lot of people, right now, like a lot of good dancers that I see right now, come at it from a very athletic point of view. Mm -hmm. It's like a it's like a sport more than yeah. anything. Yeah, that's 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 the that's like the training hard worker part of it. So like you're right, like that that's getting into two points. Another way to think about this is like. The, the talented dancer or the hard work or the trainer, the athletic, let's put it there. The, sure. The talented one and the, the athletic one. Because, like, talent is, like, they have it in them. Like yeah. They're, they're, it's there. But then there's, like, there's the training person or the athletic person that's, like, maybe didn't have it at all, but then, like, worked hard at it. That's how I, that's how I see it. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think you have to have both to be great. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, because it, of the is, it is an athletic dance. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, the talented person has talent, but if they don't do anything with it, then it just sits there and doesn't do shit. You yeah. Know? They have to train at it. They have to practice at it. They have to work on it. Like, even if it's just like going out social dancing, like that's, that's, a, that's a version of working on your dancing. Like, uh, but like the training hard worker is like, is like thinking about it, is like going to the past and like looking at videos or like doing that stuff and then like going into the studio and dancing two hours and like it could be by themselves, it could be with a partner, or like it, it could be like learning the routines, learning all the line dances we have and like making sure they have understand them. Like it could be like all a little process where like the talented person is like, oh yeah, well, I just saw that one time and I just did it. You know, like and then, yeah. and then it's, but it takes a, an extra level to go past that, you know? So like yeah. one, one e either one can work a little bit but it has limitations. But then as soon as you have both sides of that coin, like a, a talent works, works in with, with, uh, with training and, and uh, being athletic, uh, then, yeah. you be, then you become like an even, you go past that limitation and then that's when you can actually try to become a, gr a better, greater dancer. Yeah, 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 for and sure. That's, and, and, but that's like, again, that's like, we're just saying like lots of different ways to do this. Like all of them work and none of them work. You know, like it just depends on the person. Yeah, because I mean, were, well, because I think I think well, I mean, I mean, like when you when you bring it to the example here of like the whole idea of like of Carl and Nicole and you going mm -hmm. up against Remy and Elise. Yeah. Does that mean you guys are shit? No. Does that mean that they're better because like they trained and they're talented? You know, it's like, no, it just means like at that moment in that contest, that's what happened. Like, but, I can't but, I can't I cannot. So I have a really quick point. I cannot say that based off that contest, Remy and Elise are a great dancer. That's what I'm trying, that's what I was trying to get at earlier. It was like, that's like from one contest, I cannot say that because that contest was one second in all of everybody's dance life. Sure. I say for that moment, they were the better dancers, but that doesn't make them great. Winning a contest does not make you great. That, that's true. And I don't, I don't think that's what's being said, but I think, I think what he is saying is that he has watch the contest, which if people don't know which contest we're talking about, it's the uh, Lindy Fest 2017 uh, partner competition. It was like a three segment yeah. competition of awesome. like slow, medium, fast. And they were, I mean, I would say like looking at the group of dancers that they were competing against, they were definitely at a 
higher level of dancing than everyone else. Like the spectrum was wide as far as the levels that were in the competition. Mm -hmm. But I would say that in comparison to everybody else, their level was leaps and bounds further away. Like we were all like basically in the same general bubble, a large bubble, but still like the same bubble. But Remy and Elise were way outside that bubble. Yeah, like, and that's, that's beyond that you bubble. Know, you know, that's a funny thing is like as a spectator and as a judge, if I was judging that, I wouldn't have seen it that way. As a spectator, I don't see things like that. But do you think that your opinion is... It only matters to me. <laughs> well, sure. Or like if my opinion is shared but, with others. Yeah. No, but I feel like some people can benefit off of it. Like it, it takes me to another, to another thing. It's like, it's like uh, whether you take the... the Mm, where did I put it? I wrote it in here somewhere. Um, like taking the things you love seriously, and then and then knowing when that doesn't matter. Like in this case, like when I'm a judge and, and when I'm when I'm a spectator, things don't matter to me. And I'm even even sometimes when I'm a competitor, like things matter to me, but like only to myself. Yeah. Like I become the the narcissist, where I'm like, where I I am like I only care about me because I can't do anything about these other people. Yeah. I mean, maybe I could put a foot out and maybe they trip. But like in a contest, like I can't do anything about these other people. I can't even do anything about the music. Yeah. You know, like yeah. the only thing I can work on is me and a little bit like half of my partner. Yeah. You know, like that's the only thing I control. So like that's why I choose not to not to even see like, oh, my God, I'm going up against guy. Oh, my God, I'm going up against Pontus. Like, no, I don't see it like that. But but I don't need, I don't even think it's that. I think it's this last part of the sentence that he has. Like, I find it hard to describe in words what sets a pairing like Remy and Elise apart. Yeah, but not because of that contest. Right. But in general, what but in what, general, what sets them apart? I don't know, man. They, I, I honestly, for me, per, it's like a personal thing because I, I've known Elise and I've known Elise for a really long time. I'm going to say probably close to 10 years. And I met her when she was just getting the scene. Yeah. And I met her again, like when we really became friends was when she came out and visited and she, she was starting to work with Dax for the first time. Okay. So it's like right at the beginning, you know, and like I've known her and we've been pretty much consistently friends for the, for the past 10 years. And then Remy, like I've only known for the past like four years, four or five years, but like I've, like we've had like tons of deep conversation and arguments over a ton of different things. And what I can say for both of them, from my personal uh, um, observations and, and being around them is that it falls under the thing of, 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 of knowing when to take things seriously and knowing when to not, not to care. Like they're the, for them, they have a good understanding of what what makes their love of the dance and where they want to go with it. And sometimes they don't, and they're okay with that. And where people where where I like the difference from that to like not Carl Nicole, but like people anybody else is like the method we were talking about earlier, where like you think well, I think we agree actually is that. Uh, where a lot of people would go the path of like, I'm going to train, I'm going to make that contest, I'm going to make that YouTube clip, I'm going to make that taster. Yeah. And you know, like that way, like that wasn't their mentality. Their mentality was more like, I really like that move. I want to try to do it now. Yeah. Or like, or like, I don't know what I'm doing out there, but I'm just going to do it. <laughs> I, it's interesting that you bring that up. Do you have something to say? Oh, I have lots of things to say. <laughs> I, I, hold on. Let me say this real quick. It's interesting that you say that though, because I feel like... Um, I feel like the dancers who are coming up now feel like that is the road that they are required to take in order to become professional it's teaching like, instructors. It's like it's you know what that that road is that road is is the traditional role of like how again we were saying this before we got on, on the microphone was like go to school, go to college, yeah, go it's, go get a job. It's after the college. sheep go following a, the herd. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and that's fine. That's a way to do it, but it's gonna, but know that that's like the clogged up road. But it's also the most accepted road, you know, like organizers are not hiring people usually who are just unique dancers. Mm. A lot of times they're hiring people who have like started coming up in the scene and they mm. start winning competitions and they start traveling and making their faces known and putting out a couple really great routines that are on YouTube that are getting shared a bunch. You know? Yeah, maybe. It's not like... Like, your generation of dancers have come but from the, a very the difference, different place. Uh, the difference, no, the, yes, yes. The difference is they weren't going for that ultimate goal of I'm going to teach at all the places. That's they just true, did because that, that didn't exist yet. It doesn't matter. They, no, it did, it did exist. For sure it exists. Totally did. But not in the age. way that it does right now. 
Yes, it does. Yeah, it totally does. It totally does. But the thing is, it it, it, it doesn't matter because like it's still the same thing. You don't. The difference is no. Okay, let's say Remy and Elise. Let's say Remy and Elise and me and you were were, were doing we're starting at the same time. Okay. We started three years, four years into it. We decided to like, hey, let's do LHC. Yeah, they do it just because like, well, sure, I have this idea for a song, and we do it because like, fuck, we're gonna teach there in two years. Yeah. That's the difference for me. Okay. Like, even if it wasn't like the the road more ta- oftenly taken. Oftenly you're taken, you're saying. Taken. More, more taken, more traveled, more traveled. That's it. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're talking about authenticity, like people being more authentic to themselves as opposed to like having an agenda. But isn't that, but isn't that being authentic too? Like as long as you clearly state that like, this is why I'm doing it. Yeah. That's the same. That's where it's the same is that I'm clearly doing this contest and putting this routine on the floor because I just wanted, I had this idea. Right. Not because I want the next thing. Right. Like that, that's just going to happen, maybe. Right. But then the other people here is like, I'm doing this because I like this and also I want to get to there. Like that's being authentic too. Like being yeah. honest with it. Like that's just being honest with what your goals are. Like I feel like there's no problem with it. But I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say though is being authentic to the artistry of the dance. But like, they're both artistic. But- you're you're creating something. Sure. I mean, this is where I get in my funk about saying artists and artistic and everything. It's like it's it's like when it gets to stuff like this. But I'm like, it's creation. It they created it something creation. and they created something good too. But like because like we don't reward shitty things. Like there's a lot of really mm. good shit happens out there. Like a lot of yeah. really great dancing happens out there for sure. But like, uh, for me, the 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 better stuff will be rewarded, rewarded with with praise. You know, like with the idea of like, oh my God, did you see this whole clip? Like, that's great. That's great. That's great. No matter what, like that's, that's the, I started going off into another tangent and then I came back to it. Sorry. What I really mean to say, <laughs> <laughs> what I really mean to say, what I really mean to say is that putting something on the floor, putting a routine on the floor is still to me somewhat artistic. Whether it's like finger painting or like, who was the guy? Ramar? Renoir. Renoir, yeah, you know, like whether, whether it's like finger painting, or like, yeah, 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 you know, like stuff like that. Like it's it's up to the viewer, because to, to a parent, the, the fucking like finger painting is gonna be awesome. Like, oh my god, my kid did this. Like, that's so great. What say you, Brett? Oh my. <laughs> uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought at the last second. <laughs> you can just say yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I have all kinds of thoughts. Um, so I just what I I really hear you saying mm-hmm. is that you're uh okay so i think it's stupid to look at someone and be like that person's good that person's great that Me person too. sucks i don't I, agree. I think it's really reductive i don't it's, think it's useful in mm-hmm. our community it's not good at all but people are doing it mm-hmm. so let's uh engage with mr garfinkel isaac <laughs> sir isaac I just call him whatever you like at this point it's so great Prince Isaac of Prince Garfinkel. Prince Isaac of Garfinkel. <laughs> uh, let's I engage. Let's engage. Let's uh, wor- you know uh, accept his premise. People are doing that. Yeah, which is true. Yeah. Whether or not they should or not. Yeah, I criteria agree. Criteria for which. So most of these people are never going to have the access to the abundance of information that you have about people. Mm-hmm. You typically have more information even about people you don't know that are starting dancers than. Uh, than a lot of the average dancer has about anybody out there, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, just because of your experience, your depth. Even even Rachel and I, we're probably you know know a lot about people. We can yeah. make a, a determination about what makes them a great person, what makes them a great dancer, yeah. what makes them great at whatever, a great artist, all separately, and then combine those together, and then we can rank in our minds who's yeah. great, who's not, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for the average person, for the layman, they want to rank people. As great, good, not good, bad, terrible, or right. whatever. Beginning, intermediate, advanced. So, yeah. to his point, how do they do that? Mm-hmm. They're never going to know if someone's an actually a nice person. Maybe they will eventually. I right. shouldn't say never. But for, the, for if they're making a quick decision in the contest and be like, I don't know who Remy and Elise are. I don't know who Nicole and Carl Carl are. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Carl. That's because I said I said I said Nicole first. Carl and Nicole. I think I usually say it that way. I got confused. Sorry, Carl. <laughs> uh, or sorry, Nicole. So you're trying to you're trying to get sorry, to, you're trying to get to the point of like it's like just clearly based on the dance itself. And well, not I mean, not even, well, yeah. I mean, I mean, I probably. But what I'm really saying is that if you don't have all that information and you still want to make a determination, like, or if I'm watching 
uh, Remy and Elise, and I'm watching Carl and Nicole, and I'm watching Rachel and partner, and I'm watching whoever, and a whole field of people, and I've just started the dance. I don't even know that Remy and Elise are internationally known instructors, right. but I'm looking at them, and I'm like, those people are great. Everybody here is good, but something's something's different about those right, right, people. Right. So what what is that criteria? What is, like is there is there an objective of criteria? That, Probably not, but let's say there is. What is the objective criteria for what makes someone great in that sense? Right, and that but that's the thing is like when he when when uh, Prince Isaac gets into gets into <laughs> it like after the after the initial question of what differentiates the good dancer uh, from the great dancers, is it's. He says it's easy to see the distinctions between new dancers and experienced dancers, but I'm like, that's what it is. Like, he already knows. He's like, he can state it. Mastery of the fundamentals. Focus on technique. A development of individual voice. I'm like, yeah. That's that's already it. it. That's I already it. No, it. I get it. Yeah. I get it. The answer is real. Like, like, and so really, we're really on the same page because yeah. I said quality of movement. And I'm, I'm like, story I'm like, over. Already, that's yeah, not story that's over. not enough for a discussion. I, yeah, I hear yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. He, but he already knows it. And like, right. that's the thing is, is like most of us already get in this understanding of like we know what to see. But I think it's for me, it's it's, it's still objective or subjective, where it's just like it's just depending on you. If you go up to other people and go, like, what do you think? And then go, like, yeah, that's what I think, too. Even if you don't and, like, you just, like, want to join along. Like you say, like, kind of joining the herd. Yeah. Right? Uh, or following the, following the herd? Or sheep, sheep. Sheep following yeah, the herd. Yeah, yeah, Sheep joining the herd. Um, like, for me, for me, it's, yeah, it's like, it's like the personal interaction counts for me. Like, the, the whole idea of understanding these people. Like, that makes a better dancer or a greater dancer for me. When I judge, I take all of that. I try to take a lot of that out of consideration. I don't know these people. I'm just basing off of what I see right there, right then, right now. Here's here's what I will say about Remy and Elise from watching this uh, this competition on YouTube, is that they are listening to each other a lot better yeah. than most other partners, and I think that that comes in part of dancing with each other more. Like they train together extensively. They're teaching together. They're sharing ideas with each other all the time. Yeah, probably that. I mean, they've got a he, deeper understanding. The funny, the funny thing is as well is that is that if you ask Remy that, he'd be like, "I barely see her." Right. And that's the funny thing is like for me, for me, it's like it's not because they have already a rapport. It's like they already have that in them. So maybe like yes. maybe like the difference is like the difference mm -hmm. between a good dancer and a great dancer is learning to listen better. I mean, right, right. That's like that's what I'm trying to get to. Right. Is that like. Great dancers know how to listen better. It's like great improvisers. They know how to listen to each other better, right? Like you have to listen well in order to be able to respond. Or great interviewers. Barbara Walters was a great interviewer for a reason. is because she listened super well. Mm -hmm. It wasn't because she knew how to ask a good question. I mean, <laughs> she obviously was able to I ask good questions, but like she could also listen really well. Right, right. Brett? Well, I do want to, um, what you've, uh, this discussion has uh, reminded me of is that um, there is, uh, I have noticed over the years when people are discussing this very thing, like who's great, who's not, and really it doesn't, it's never posed as that question, right? Mm -hmm. It's never like, all right, who are the great dancers, who are the good dancers? It's usually like, who do you, what like do you to think watch? of so? Yeah, who do you think of so and so? Yeah, you're right. What do you think of so and so? Or what do you think of so and so? And, uh, or what I noticed is that like competitions like ILHC, for the <clears throat> Invitational Jack and Jill every now and then, or maybe it wasn't ILHC, maybe it was like Lindy Fest or something where they have a high profile Jack and Jill. And then there would be a dancer in there that's been dancing for like 15, 20 years, but they're not famous. They're not Lindy Hop famous. Right. They've been flying under the radar. All the other pros know them, dance with them for 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They know their quality, but the audience doesn't. Right. And so if you ask that audience, like, oh, what did you think of the Invitational Jack and Jill? They'll always go like, who the hell was that one person? That person didn't belong in that competition right. at all. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. So, so and to me, my, I immediately go to... Oh, you know, you can't even tell the difference. Yeah, you just see, you just have been. You told see a title. You see been, a title. Yeah, exactly. It's been banged into your head that yeah. this person and this person and this person through their branding, right. through their constant appearance at events, those are the great dancers. And then you see somebody else who's 
right. probably also objectively a great dancer, and you can't tell the difference because your palate is not defined enough. You don't know enough about the dance to be able to look at them and, and see that. It's so true. Like it, 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 it ends up, it ends up going down to like this uh, to uh, Sir Prince Isaac Garf- of the Garfinkel. Uh, but like, <laughs> here's what I'm gonna say to you, and I think we're gonna all find a version of this or kind of agree on this. Is like. This is not the question you should be asking yourself. The question you should be asking yourself is, what does this dance mean to you, and how can I be better at it? Like that's that's really the question. Like if you're watching, if you're watching these, take that, Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching these contests, great. This is how a question is asked. Continue, wa- continue watching these contests because Brett works really hard on Breach. them. Breach, breach. And uh, but I think I think for me is the the the. I think for all of us, rather, I think for all of us uh, is it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, greatness and and being good or being great at something is really subjective, subjective, right? Subjective is like it's like a personal opinion, right? It's and then so who the fuck cares at the end of the day? Like I said, like with Tom at the very beginning, like only a certain amount of people really understand uh, only a certain amount of people understand and know of this amazing dancer. And other people might see him go, well, whatever. Like, where does he teach? You know, like, I think, did you ask me that? Did, yeah. you, did you ask me that? It's like, where did well, he teach? I, I, no, I, no, I didn't say that. Oh, I, said, I, I think didn't. you said something, I think yeah. you said something like that. that I, and I was like, mm, you didn't teach. Uh, anyways, point, B, point being is like, for, for me, it's like, this is not, the, this is a good topic to discuss, like, on, on this show where we can talk about deeper things rather than just the superficial of the idea of, like, can they do a good swing out? Or what does that really mean? Yeah. And then it gets further into that. But really, the, the better question is, like, what does the dance mean to you and how can you be better at it? In other news, Brett is so funny. Brett's the funniest. He's so funny. It's the only reason why I married him. And you're the cutest one in the room. I'm the cutest one in the room. You know, and no, it's so funny that you say this because <laughs> just it's so funny that I that I said that. Yes. It just yesterday. Uh so okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a little deep into coffee here and maybe you will understand and maybe you won't understand. But so yesterday I had to put a, a roast into the espresso hopper mm-hmm. that was one day off roast. And usually when you put, when you use coffee of any kind, you want it to be aged at least a few days after it's been roasted because otherwise it won't taste like anything. It'll yeah. just taste like, like charred pieces, you know that like charred taste. Like no. if you burn your food. Oh, that okay. Yeah, like it, it tastes yeah, like okay. that, just okay, like okay. roasty and I was charred. Like, I, was like, I was like, I haven't had that much coffee where it's been charred. And so <laughs> we had gone through so much coffee that I had to use the freshest coffee we had. It was one day off roast, and it it doesn't taste like anything. It just tastes like roastiness, okay. like fire, all right, all like right. burnt a burnt marshmallow. And this guy <laughs> came in. And ordered an espresso. And I was like, hey, our espresso is one day off roast. Would you mind if I served you our single origin espresso? This is what it's going to taste like. It's totally different from this other espresso. But I don't feel comfortable serving this to you as a, as a shot of espresso. Because sure, sure, it's sure. not going to taste good. Yeah. And he was like, no, just give it to me. Just give it to me. And he was like being kind of... Um, I, was, I, was, I was trying to like... Be honest with him and like try to be like, this is what I want to serve you because this is going to taste better. And he was like, he just didn't understand what I was saying. And so I was talking to my coworker about it, and she was like, you know what though, like, he's not going to be able to know the difference anyway. Yeah. And it's the same thing, yeah. like. It, Maybe like, he didn't it even care. Even matter. He doesn't even care. He just like he holding an espresso in his hand. Like, yeah. could be that. Like, or it could be like, but like, I don't care. Like, I, mean, I just he was need like it. an old British dude. Yeah, yeah. Like he doesn't even care. Yeah. But to me, like that's a that's the same thing as like for like having espresso in Europe. Like I'm just like oh, everything yeah. is shit here. And there was like, oh, you Americans don't know. I was like, we let it sit in a in a in a big old thing all day long because we know we're just gonna put milk and sugar in it anyway. So it doesn't even fucking give a shit. <laughs> I mean, we don't at Blue Bottle, but maybe you do. That coffee's amazing. It's so good. It's, no, no, not Blue Bottle. I meant, I meant, oh. the, I meant the, the coffee that just sits in, sits the, in the old, coffee machine. Oh, hell yeah! That stuff is great. It's a lifesaver. This is literally sixty five percent of why most hospitals stay open. Okay, but <laughs> I mean, oh, this is like the perfect example. It's like sixty five percent of the reason why dance studios stay open because. 
beginners are always there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so definitely true. But the thing is, is, is again, it's like it, I'm not downplaying the idea of coffee. Like I'm just like I it's, prefer it's this just one. coffee. It. But it's the same no, thing. No, it's, it's yeah, it's, I know it's the same thing. It, but it's, it's, it's just it's, dancing. It's just another th- another way to see it. That's all it is. I mean, so like, I'm just gonna say that your entire livelihood is just dancing. But yeah, whatever. Pretty much. It's pretty like much. whatever. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, and I really love it though. I really love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really love it. I really, I really enjoy every part of it, except for being away from people every once in a while that I really like. But it's, it's a nice little trade-off. Like me, the narcissist. Oh, and you, yeah, yeah and you too. <laughs> oh, and you too. I was gonna say Me, Fur. the cutest person in the room. Uh, but I'm I think we so adorable. I think we talked about a lot of stuff and how Rachel is adorable um, here. But you know what, guys? I got, I, I, we can't take the question unless we do it real fast because I got to leave. I have a date tonight. You have a date. I have a date tonight. And I'm already late for it, but that's Oh my fine. gosh. Let's just take a question. Wait, Let's is it, it in LA or is it in yeah, Orange? It's in LA. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you going? Where are you going? I don't know. We'll see. Oh, are you picking them up? This is not part of the show. We need to ask a question or not. Is it? Is are you going to ask a question or not? Or I'm going to end can, it right now? No, we can. I mean, we can ask the question. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I love how both, I, you, both is, you went like, oh, whatever. I don't uh, I mean, like, want to know. I, we're all <laughs> interested in the date. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, that's it? Yeah, it's fine. Oh, okay. Is it someone we know? Sure, why not? Okay, cool. I'll tell you afterwards. Great. I'll tell you afterwards. It's okay. Fine. Should we do the question or you want to add Yeah, it? yeah, let's do the question real quick. The question's from Lori. Of Hi, course Lori. it is. One of the she six. She says, dance clothes. That's not a question, Lori. <laughs> your fanciest duds, your most misguided clothing purchases, your most expensive investment, your most embarrassing early Lindy outfits. I know that one. Your most favorite piece of clothing right now or one item you've had and continue to wear the longest. Go. Let's just go down the list. Yeah, so, okay. First one, your fanciest duds. Uh, for me, it's probably my all cream white suit. Oh yeah, my two piece that is hot. Like from my, yeah, yeah, that shit is dope. Uh, that's that's probably my fanciest. Even though it's got like it's so it's it's like there's like makeup on one end because oh, of God. like girls being too close, you know, and like like sweat stains just won't go. But oh. it's still fancy from far away. You never know. What are you? You, you can your, get that shit dry cleaned. I, no, you can't take it out at that point. Uh, you never know. No, I tried. Uh, no, I tried. I tried. Uh, my fanciest studs are probably, it's probably that uh, that vintage dress that I have from the 20s. Oh, it's yeah? like a real the vintage one. dress. The one that's like <laughs> very heavily beaded and it's yeah. like 35 pounds mm, and like a little awesome. too big for me. Yeah. It's so beautiful, but also like I, I can't wear it out because right. it's too. It's too much. It's too much. It's too fragile. Yeah. yeah. Uh, most misguided clothing purchases. Eris Allen? Uh, no, because I had the first. <laughs> I had the first Eris Allen, which is good. And then after th- th- I tried on the second pair when they were, when they got into another like a, they made it from different parts as opposed to that first one that was really good. And then the second one was like, oh. Uh, but no, the, I, I I'm glad to say I never had to buy one of those. Uh, <laughs> it was always given to me. Um, uh, I hate those shoes. And uh, so your most misguided clothing purchases for me. Is probably what was it? Oh, it was getting like like super super high waisted pants. I got those oh. made for me though too. Like they were like my first or second pair that I ever got. It was like too much. Yeah, you know, like it's too like, high. It's like, like up at it's the like, nips. Here's my yeah. It's like here's my head. Here's my <laughs> neck. Here's my nips, and then there's my legs. That's it. There's nothing in the middle. There. I have no intestinals. Oh, go ahead. What's, my, it? What's I what's mean, mine is either uh, Aris Allen's or Clothes like dresses that I've bought from Mod Cloth because oh, yeah. every dress that I've bought has like come to me with an issue or like I wore it twice <laughs> and it ripped in That's the armpit. That's the fucking worst. It, it really it's is. It's the worst. Uh, expensive, Most expensive investment. Expensive investment. I think is um, I probably yeah probably the Chloe Hong the Chloe Hong uh, uh, one that I got. It's like a brown one, light brown one. Is it a suit? Or yeah, it's a suit. Oh, okay. yeah, it's a suit. Mine are That's probably mine. Um, my remix shoes. Yeah, I mean, I'm probably. also a Jew. I don't, sp- I don't spend a lot of money on clothes, <laughs> unless I really have to. Yeah, you can, you can clink that. Uh, your most embarrassing early Lindy half outfits. Oh my God, I went through this phase. <laughs> I mean, we all have that. We all have to have that. I went through this phase where I thought like wearing. Um, what are they called? Like scarfs around your waist? You know where yeah, you yeah, like of use course, yeah. like oh, ties? Oh yeah, we well, in the video. Or, yeah, for yeah. sure. Where you'd use like old ties or like scarfs as a belt, and then they'd like yeah, hang. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. is that word? I can't think of the word right hang. now. Sash. Sash. Thank you. Like a sash. <laughs> I was really into sashes. Yeah. 
And I look back now, or like, oh, the first team routine we ever did with Jitterbugs Anonymous at the oh, intercollegiate geez. swing battle, we wore these shirts that had like these long pointy sleeves that like draped down. Yeah. They looked like w- witch clothing. <laughs> <laughs> Puffy sleeves. It was, they weren't even puffy. They were just like long and dangly, and they came to like a pointed tip. Oh, it was just so bad. Just hanging penises. And those shell toes. Um, <laughs> shell toes? Those uh, Adidas shell toes. You didn't like them? No, that was, I mean, that no, was your I lo- embarrassing? I, loved, I mean, I loved them, yeah, but I also wore like big socks with them. It's not embarrassing. Okay. The sash is embarrassing. The sash is embarrassing. I think for, for me, it's probably like uh, uh, was it the Christmas, sash? The Christmas show. When I was like just starting, red suspenders that clipped on. Oh, that's cute. With a Snoopy Christmas tie. Wait, how old were you? It must have been 13 then. I mean, that's still kind of embarrassing yeah, for a 13 really year old. I saw the picture. That's really embarrassing. Oh, and, yeah, then, yeah, and then yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe uh, uh, when I was a little bit older and like I would wear like a corduroy jacket with like a red button down that was like way too long for me. And then like oh. you could see the white undershirt that was like up to my like fucking Adam's apple. And, and, Your oh, Mikey's apple. Man, apple. yeah, it was it was just so <laughs> much clothing. Like I was like, that could be a fucking zoot suit. You. Oh my god. And oh, Brett showing us Brett's his sash. showing us the sashes and the and the pointy sleeves. The the oh foreskin my god. of the Jews. Um. So next up. Oh my god. Um, your favorite clothing right now. Piece um, of clothing. My right favorite now. piece of clothing is probably this red dress that I have. It's like a red orange dress. Mm-hmm. I wear it all the time, and it's got it's got kind of like a corduroy texture to it but it's not actually corduroy and it has this very uh like mad men look to it like very 60s i have a pant a pair of pants from zara that's like it has to be over 12 years old really yeah like I, i've the, lost it I've also lost the them. one item that you've had and continue to wear the longest yeah i've lost it like twice and then i, fi- I like find it and i'm like i put them on i'm like still fits like gotten the uh. buttons replaced like three or four times already like it but they like just they fit and they sit so well on me and I'm like, damn. You know, it's like it's like I'm gonna try I'm, I'm gonna try them on. Like when you find that thing in the back of your closet and you're like, yes. you're like I'm gonna try it on and I'm like, no, no, no. And I'm like Nar. damn, it's good. Nar. Oh, it's good. Damn. And then good. yeah, that's that that's probably good my group, my good. longest, yeah, longest wearing. Uh, that my I long- wear. oh man, my longest And your favorite thing oh you, you said I've your had. favorite. My yeah, favorite thing, yeah. The thing that I've worn the longest Probably these bloomers that I have. I bought them at like a regular dance store. I mean, bloomers like like dance pants, like yeah, like yeah, my yeah. dance pants. Bloomers, my dance shorts. Yeah, <laughs> what? What? A, I don't know what. Under what? underwear, under my, overwear. My undergarments. Over I don't wear. I I mean I always Over cover underwear. my underwear. I'm yeah. not Joe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but she does now. She does now. Yeah, she does now. I don't think uh, you were listening. But they're like. <laughs> yeah, they're just like a regular pair of dance shorts that I got from like a regular yeah. dance store, and yeah. they work pretty good. I mean, they're not the they're not the best for every outfit. Like if I'm wearing sure. like a light colored dress or something, but overall they're like stay on the tushy tush, which stay, is like like topic, a, a mountain topic. to cover. <laughs> you know. All right. Yeah, thank you, Lori, for that question. That was a really good one, running down the history of our wearing and tears and tears of Lindy Hop in this world. Britta, what's your bright side? Ready, go. Uh, just we are going to a lot of events really soon. <laughs> That's not a bright side a bright face. Side. That, that looks side. like kind of a sad face. The sad side. When you asked me that, I was looking at all the trips we have, we're going to ILHC. We're Camp going Hollywood. to Camp Hollywood the very next weekend. Uh, and it's not even a weekend because it's like on Friday and we come back Monday. So there's really only three days yeah. in between. Welcome and to my then, world. I know, right? Well, but then I have to work. Yeah. My, well, anyways. Uh, then we're going to LOTR, uh-huh. also known as Lenny on the Rocks, and Denver. Uh-huh. And I guess that's... That's it? it. That's yeah. still a lot. But it's a and lot that's, in that's a less row. Than, that's less than a month. That's three. That's yeah, three it's like in three less than a month. Three big events in a month. Yeah, yeah. yeah for well, sure. Well, and he's going to training in Boston for his regular job. Mm. Yeah, that's true. I'm also going to Boston. That's fun. In between. Boston. What's your bright side, Rachel? Oh, my bright side is that you're back here in my presence. Oh, shut up. I love I, I you really so much. I really thought you were going to go. I really I thought you were going to go. I love you so much. 
so much. And I we, we really love thought you, you were going to go out to be like, I'm so well, cute. Oh, Mikey, you're doing it right now. Mikey, I really love you. You're and doing I'm it right so now. I'm so cute. I'm so cute. And I love this. you so much. I'm proving you I'm the cutest in the fucking room. We really love you. We really love you. Last word. Last word. It's good. What's uh, your bright side? My bright side bright is... Side, bright side. We're going to take a look at the bright side. Yeah. My bright side is that you spit on me today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> I can hear that, you know. Like, it, you're, the headset is, like, right here. I felt it. Like, I saw it, and I felt it in its ear. You're welcome. That is horrible. Oh, All right, everybody. So welcome. You guys, you guys can find us on SoundCloud, iTunes, and, and YouTube. And our new website, oneofsix.dance. Exactly. So if you keep seeing that that message pop up there, that's it's the reason why. It's our new website. Rachel feels so good. She bought it. It's really nice. I mean, it's Brett a, made it. Brett made Brett it. Brett made the website. It's a link. It's a link it's a to. Link. The, it's, it's not a, a website. It just goes to iTunes. Yeah, exactly. It's but it's still it's, it's easier a link. to tell people about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you see, but it, we made it just for you guys. So if you see it up there, click uh, click it, and you can get to uh, our Apple uh, iTunes page, uh, uh, podcast page, really, really fast. So that's really awesome. Um, Please leave us your questions and comments on the Facebook page. We love hearing it. And then, like, we also, <laughs> we also like, it's really funny because we're getting so many long questions now. Yeah. The people are getting really into this. And I'm like, holy shit. Oh, my shit. God. Oh, my God. Okay. So, Steve Juan, thank you, Steve, for bringing this up. Oh, Jesus. He says uh, on our, on our wall, like can it. you compare like and contrast it. breaking the third wall and breaking the fourth wall? I wanted to say the entire conversation was with Joe. Third? You said third wall the Fuck. entire time. And I was like, what is he talking about? <laughs> Bring in the fourth wall. God damn it. I was drunk. You're welcome, Steve. Yeah. Damn it. I didn't know that. I really, yeah. I was like, I, I, when yeah. I listened back to it, I was like, cool. All right. All right. Moving on. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you said it like nine times. Shit. Uh, all right. Well, I'll take that hit. My bad. The one hit. Wonder. The one hit wonder. All right, that's it for our show today. We'll see you next week on the bright side. I'm going to end it right there. Goodbye, goodbye.